Good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Those bright lights caught me out. Um, my name's Aaron Childrick, and I work for Reuters. Japan is slowly inching towards uh, its first nuclear restart, restart under new safety rules devised in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Even so, it's not hard to find critics of the new safety regime and um, how the, the regulator is going about it. It's obviously a very difficult task in relicensing all of Japan's nuclear plants. We have two of those critics with us today. On my immediate right, we have Satoshi Sato, who is a former nuclear engineer with uh, GE and a, a critic of, of the NRA and its approach. Uh, to his right is uh, Professor Katsuhiko Ishibashi, who is probably known to everyone in this room because of the warning he gave after the 2007 earthquake damaged the Kashiwazaki Kariwa nuclear plant. Um, I won't spend any more time introducing these two, apart from uh, introducing Eileen uh, Miyoko-Smith on further on the right, who will be doing some translation for us. Thank you very much, Eileen. Um, so first of all, we'll hear from Sato-san, and then uh, Ishibashi-sensei, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Can I please ask everyone to turn off their uh, mobile devices? Thank you very much, Sato-san. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Once again, <coughs> good afternoon, everyone. Um, <coughs> first of all, I'm not um, a seismologist. Uh, assuming uh, now you hear a uh, seismologist or geologist either, I think it, it is beneficial for all of us to spend the next uh, 10 minutes or so to equalize the level of uh, the knowledge about <coughs> Um, some important and basic terminologies of uh, earthquake. Uh, for example, <clears throat> when speaking about the design basis of earthquake, people say <clears throat> uh, 0.3 G or 30 percent of gravity of G. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but we don't really understand what it means. Um, say we have a uh, huge earthquake right now, um, what specific the attributes of uh, earthquake do you worry about? Uh, you don't worry about the location of the uh, epicenter. You don't worry about uh, the Richter scale number. But you do care um, how hard you are shaken or how long you are shaken. Uh, how, how long you are shaken, um, the answer to that question is pretty straightforward. It's um, the start of the earthquake to the end of the earthquake. But uh, how hard you are shaken, um, require, the answer to that question requires some scientific de definition rather than casual expression of how hard you, know, you, you are shaken. Um, <clears throat> So we use uh, <coughs> the seismic acceleration um, to express how hard uh, uh, we are shaken. Um, but uh, it depends on the nature of uh, the piece, piece of equipment. Say I'm a piece of equipment installed somewhere in the reactor building with a bunch of friends from a uh, short guy to, to tall guy. <laughs> and <clears throat> say my natural frequency is one cycle per second. And my floor is uh, vibrated at the same cycle. Then I'm shaken hard. But the rest of the guys may not. 
say that my, <coughs> my, my floor is now the vibrating at uh, 10 cycles per second. I don't feel high acceleration, <coughs> but uh, the short guy, shortest guy A feels very strong, you know, the acceleration. Likewise, uh, when my floor is uh, vibrating at uh, <coughs> 0.1 cycle per second, the, the tallest guy here, the B, uh, feels the strong the acceleration, but I, I feel maybe nothing. The complexity of, of um, the real, real seismic wave, um, it is composed of a full range of uh, free, the frequencies with variable amplitude in all directions, up and down, north to south, and west to east. End result is everybody is shaken, but with a different acceleration. So you may ask a question. If everybody feels acceleration differently, who is telling you how much PGA, or peak ground acceleration is? And when somebody say PGA is 560 gal, which guy is telling you so? The answer is this guy, the shortest guy. But where is this guy? He's on the top of uh, the ex excavated uh, um, the ground free field before constructing a reactor building. Then you may want to ask a question, why do you ignore other guys? No. Actually, we do, we do not ignore anybody. We treat everybody equally. How? We use a response spectrum to cover an entire range of frequency or period. Sometimes in this way. Again, I have a the, the bunch of um, the guys reporting to me how individual guy feel the acceleration. So I plot um, the whatever acceleration they feel on this graph to, to have a spectrum. This is the response spectrum. But mostly in this different format. A little bit complicated, but the basic idea is the same. So now, new question, how do, you, do I read the PGA, the peak ground acceleration from this diagram? The same. <clears throat> they read the acceleration at the highest frequency or lowest period. Uh, again, I have a bunch of the guys reporting um, the acceleration to me. And the, the shortest guy uh, tells me the PGA. But the important thing here is that the PGA is not the sole important parameter. We must care about the whole spectrum. By the way, uh, we know from our experience, the longer wave, uh, the light wave or sonic wave, whatever, that travels further with less attenuation, this is generally true of seismic waves, like illustrated here. <clears throat> so this means the high magnitude long distance earthquake could significantly contribute to the low frequency region of a <coughs> response spectrum. And then <clears throat> the question is, <clears throat> where does such an earthquake come from? We know the answer. It mostly comes from plate interfaces. Also, we know the duration of a high magnitude earthquake is longer than that of a low magnitude earthquake. The long duration earthquake are more destructive. You know why? <clears throat> the degree of destruction or damage 
is some, somehow proportional to the value CAB, cumulative absolute velocity, which is time integral of uh, acceleration spectrum. So the longer duration of the earthquake is the, the higher CAB value resulting in more damage. Here's an important um, the information I'd like to share with you. There are two reasons why high magnitude, long distance earthquakes are so important to consider. They may not be important in high frequency region, but could be significant in low frequency region of a given response spectrum. They could produce much higher CAB, causing more earthquake damage due to longer duration. Once again, a DBA, design-based earthquake, is not defined by peak ground acceleration. It is defined by a ground motion respo <coughs> uh, response spectrum. spectrum. International viewpoints. There are the three important points here. Um, the first, the high magnitude, long distance earthquake are important to consider, just as I mentioned, and we'll be discussing in detail in the next slide. Uh, let me skip the second one. The third one, the probability of annual ex uh, exceedance of a design-based basis earthquake is to be 10 to the minus fourth or less. Uh, this is uh, the required by IAEA safety guide. What do you see here is the two, the acceleration spectrum. The left one uh, represents the one in the lower frequency, and uh, the other one right side uh, in the higher uh, frequency. NRC reg regulatory guide requires to define a single smooth broadband spectrum for the design basis earthquake instead of multiple individual spectra. In line with this procedure, <coughs> uh, NRC defines the controlling earthquake. The controlling earthquake is the earthquake with uh, the most representative uh, the magnitude and uh, the distance from epicenter. But there is a, when there is a contribution greater than 5% of the total hazard for the low frequency, for the distance greater than 100 kilometer, the second controlling earthquake needs to be determined. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the, from the real one. The, the Bogo uh, nuclear power plant in Georgia, United States. The left. <coughs> Uh, th this shows uh, the contribution uh, to the hazard, overall hazard. Uh, you see uh, t two peaks on the left for a high frequency region. But if you look at the right side, the lower frequency, the, you see um, the big uh, the peak uh, from uh, uh, high magnitude long distance earthquake. Uh, in this case, the 7.2 magnitude, 130 kilometer from my epicenter. So <clears throat> we needed to construct uh, the response spectrum for each uh, controlling uh, the earthquake, and then uh, superpose together to construct the single smooth spectrum. That's the design, um, design basis of spectrum. <clears throat> the IAEA expectation about uh, the probability of annual exceedance is to be 10 to the minus fourth or less. Our history is not very beautiful. <laughs> it's a uh, hundred times worse than international expectation. 
because we have uh, so many occasions uh, exceeding uh, the design basis, basis earthquake. And we have uh, many examples of significant impacts or damage to both safety related and non safety related equipment in the past. Um, during the Fukushima accident, also the significant impacts were observed. So, <clears throat> what improvements have, me, have been made after Fukushima accident? Did we finally get a single smooth broadband spectrum? Do we now consider a high ma magnitude long distance earthquake in low frequency region? Do we finally meet the probability of annual exceedance less than 10 to the minus fourth? Let's take a look. <clears throat> this is from uh, Sendai. You see SS1, SS2, they are not combined together, they are separate, they are treated separately. No smooth, no single smooth broadband spectrum, two separate. NRA did a good job to convince the Kyushu Electric to add extra spectrum, the dotted line here. But you see, it's uh, only little bit above the line. And <clears throat> anyway, if uh, this is compared to the Diablo Canyon earthquake design spectra, you see this. It's a signif significantly below the Diablo Canyon spectrum. And the duration of the earthquake. The the top one you see is uh, the originally the, the proposed by Kyushu Electric, 540 gal. And again, the NRA was successfully um, convinced uh, the Kyushu Electric to accept the second one, 620. You may feel good job because their number is a six, six, two, 620, whereas the Kyushu's original number was a 540. But if you look at the, the duration, it's only a few seconds. The real earthquake duration is a 300 seconds in this scale, whereas this one is only 30 seconds, 10 times different. What about uh, exceedan <coughs> exceedance, 10 to the minus fourth? Uh, S if uh, you look at the dotted line S S2, this does not meet the IAEA expectation, 10 to the minus fourth. It's way below. And the credibility of uh, this, the, hazard, the uniform hazard spectrum, uh, if uh, we compare it to a typical U.S. East Coast the spectrum, surprisingly, it's below the U.S. spectrum. So the cred credibility of uh, the uniform hazard spectrum is, um, is questionable. All of a sudden, they introduce the third, um, the design spectrum, but not for the, uh, the reactor, not for uh, the safety-related piece of equipment. They simply apply it for the, con the design of isolation building. I mean, a seismic isolation building, sorry. As, as we expect, the lower frequency region the oh the, this earthquake is assumed to occur um, at uh, the Ryukyu Trench, far away. This is the uh, what I called 
high, mag high magnitude, uh, long distance earthquake, okay? So they assumed this, this earthquake, but not for the reactor, uh, reactor building or safety related piece of equipment, only uh, seismic isolation building. But we, as you can see, the lower frequency region, the contribution of this earthquake, earthquake is very significant. Now comparing to SS2, this small, this earthquake looks more significant in terms of uh, CAB. Oh. <laughs> well, any, anyway, uh, my conclusion here is the NIA or Kyushu developed three different uh, the design basis earthquake, whereas the international the community recommends to uh, define a single smooth um, broadband the spectrum to bind everything. So this is a part of uh, the inconsisten inconsistency with the international the practice. I hope you understand my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've all become scientists very quickly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sato-san. Uh, Ichibashi-sensei, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for inviting me today to here to the FCCJ press conference. <clears throat> and, and sorry for my bad voice due to uh, some trouble in my throat. Uh, and my talk is uh, rather narrow range, and I concentrate on this topic. Um, <clears throat> Japan's first post-Fukushima approval of nuclear power plant issued by the Nuclear Regulation Authority, NRA, to the Kyushu Electric Power uh, on September last year is illegal, I think. The NRA has violated its own legal regulatory requirements regarding the seismic safety assessment of the Sendai nuclear power plant in southern Kyushu. And this matter was not addressed by the recent uh, Sendai nuclear power plant injunction lawsuit, and so still remains a serious, serious issue to be addressed. Uh, <clears throat> formulation of uh, design basis earthquake ground motion, DBGM, uh, is essential uh, for the seismic safety assessment of nuclear power plants as explained by Mr. Sato, because it is used for the seismic design of nuclear power plant facilities. And DBGM is called Standard Seismic Motion, SSM, by the NRA. And NRA defines it as earthquake ground motion that rarely occurs, but may possibly occur in the service period of the facility and have a significant effect on it. And as Satosan said, a standard of the annual exceedance probability, AEP, of the SSM is 10 to the minus fourth or less. Uh, <clears throat> the new regulation requires um, <clears throat> the SSM shall be formulated as uh, two kinds. The, the first is the earthquake ground motion formulated with a hypercenter specified for each site. Uh, and second, the earthquake ground motion formulated with, without a hypercenter. And today, I'll concentrate on the 
first uh, ground motion. The earthquake ground motion formulated with a hypocenter specified for each site shall be formulated by selecting multiple earthquakes that are predicted to have uh, significant effects on the site, which is called earthquakes for investigation, EQFI, uh, as to three kinds of earthquakes, inland crustal earthquakes, interplate earthquakes, and oceanic interplate earthquakes. And by implementing the evaluation of ground motions for each selected e EQFI. The illegality in the NRA's review took place in the selection of earthquakes for investigation. Uh, the consequence appears serious for the uh, standard seismic motion formulation and thus the seismic safety assessment of the Sendai nuclear power plant. And this slide shows uh, three, three types of earthquakes in terms of plate tectonics. Uh, inland crustal earthquakes within a land plate and uh, interplate earthquakes on the plate interf on the interface between land plate and oceanic plate, uh, and third, third, thirdly, thirdly, oceanic intraplate earthquake uh, occurring within the oceanic plate. And uh, this part of uh, the oceanic plate, uh, a subducted oceanic plate uh, inclined beneath the overriding plate is called a slab. So, uh, oceanic intraplate earthquake occurring within the slab is specifically called intraslab earthquakes. And in case of Kyushu, uh, the Kyushu Island is situated on, on the land plate. And from the east, uh, a oceanic plate called the Philippine Sea Plate is being subducted uh, beneath Kyushu toward uh, the west. And, okay. and the language of NRA criterion uh, that are predicted to have significant effects on the site uh, for selecting multiple earthquakes uh, for investigation is very b vague. Uh, Kyushu Electric, therefore, set up its own criterion that the seismic in intensities, SI, of earthquakes for investigation to be examined at the Sendai site will be five lower or greater on the Japan Meteorological Agency's sc intensity scale. So uh, it is appropriate of Kyushu Electric to have specified uh, the criterion uh, like this quantitatively. And this shows uh, the seismic intensity scale used in Japan, the JMA scale. Uh, so uh, five, five lower here corresponds roughly to eight uh, on the modified Merkley scale. And uh, please note that although the seismic intensity of five lower seems low for nuclear power plants, this is just the criterion to set, select earthquakes for investigation, not the standard seismic motion itself. Uh, Kyushu Electric examined the effects of past earthquakes on the Sendai nuclear power plant according to its own criterion, whether the seismic intensity is greater than five lower or not. And the left map shows epicentral distribution of past, dis past destructive earthquakes in and around Kyushu. And the right figure is a plot of earthquakes uh, in, the, in the left map. In the magnitude delta field, so, uh, ma magnitude on the vertical axis and uh, delta, epicentral distance from the Sendai nuclear power plant on the horizontal axis. And uh, <clears throat> the, the seismic intensity of each earthquake 
at the Sendai site is a function of magnitude and epicentral distance. And these A, B, C are uh, empirical curves dividing uh, seismic intensity three around here and four uh, in this zone and five between B and C and six over the curve C. Uh, and Kishu Electric claimed that the sources of the largest interplate and uh, oceanic interplate earthquakes are far from the site. Uh, their seismic intensities are inferred to be smaller than five lower, not satisfying the Kyushu Electric's criterion. Then Kyushu Electric concluded that interplate and oceanic interplate earthquakes need not to be selected as earthquakes um, for investigation. So this one, this uh, blue one, is the largest interplate earthquake since 1662, uh, Kyushu Electric considered. And uh, its epicentral distance is uh, about 170 kilometers from the Sendai site, and magnitude is uh, a little bit larger than 7.5, so plotted here. And then it, it uh, th this plot uh, comes within uh, seismic intensity for region, for belt. So they ignored this one. Uh, and uh, the, the largest intraplate, oceanic intraplate earthquake is this one in 1909. And uh, central distance was 100 kilometer and magnitude, magnitude was 7.6 and plotted here a little bit uh, the seismic intensity is a little bit smaller than five. So they ignore these two kinds of uh, earthquakes. But th this Kyushu Electric's conclusion is wrong because examination of only past earthquakes violates the NRA regulations. Uh, anyway, like this, a Kyushu Electric form formulated the standard seismic motion of earthquake ground motion formulated, formulated with a hypercenter based merely on inland crustal earthquakes, uh, which is called SS1. Uh, uh, but uh, sorry, I'll skip the explanation of these figures. Uh, for saving time. Uh, some, something was explained by uh, Mr. Sato, for, especially for this, SS1 and SS2. <coughs> uh, the regulatory requirement says, plate tectonics, etc., shall comprehensively be considered when selecting the earthquakes for investigations, investigation. Uh, so, following this regula regula regulatory requirement of examining interplate earthquakes, the anticipated Great Nankai Trough earthquake uh, should have been selected as the earthquakes for earthquake for investigation. And this map is uh, the estimation of maximum seismic intensity distribution by the magnitude 9.0 Nankai Trough earthquake uh, published by the study team in the cabinet office in 2012. And as you may know, uh, this earthquake, uh, this anticipated great Nankai Trough earthquake uh, has been a nationwide concern for these years. The Seismic intensity around uh, Sendai in this map, so Sendai is right here, uh, reaches five lower. This blue shows five lower, uh, which meets the Kyushu Electric's criterion of earthquake for investigation. 
And moreover, this is probably an underestimation for the nuclear power plant's standard seismic motion with uh, annual excedence probability of 10 to the minus fourth to 10 to the minus fifth. Because this mapping was only an estimation for the purpose of obtaining a general picture of seismic shaking that would occur nationwide. So a specific close examination is required for the, the estimation for the Sendai nuclear power plant. And the earthquake for investigation related to this Nankai Trough earthquake would have a more stringent source model than that of the study team for this map. And uh, Kyushu Electric tried a preliminary evaluation of ground motion from the Nankai Trough earthquake, but the evaluation was very insufficient and not included in the application to the NRA. So uh, Mr. Sato showed uh, an, an example uh, of uh, ground motion due to the Ryukyu Trench earthquake, but uh, the, uh, the application describes only this Ryukyu uh, Trench earthquake, uh, ignoring Nankai Trough earthquake. Uh, and I'll, I'll skip again this uh, slide, but anyway, uh, the treatment of this Nankai Trough earthquake is very, very, very insufficient. And uh, taking the Nankai Trough earthquake into account is indispensable in the formulation of the se standard seismic motion for the Sendai nuclear power plant. And generally, for the, seismic, uh, the standard seismic motion, uh, as Sato, Mr. Sato explained, not only the peak ground acceleration, but also frequency, overall frequency characteristics and duration times are very important. And if the ground motion due to the uh, M magnitude 9 class Great Nankai Trough earthquake is formulated by setting up the possible maximum fault parameters, then the ground motion may exceed SS1. Uh, and the duration of the, gr the ground motion of the anticipated Great Nankai Trough earthquake is surely very long. And uh, these figures, uh, the appearance is much different from uh, Sato-san's slide, but the same as shown by Sato-san. Uh, SS1H and SS2H. Uh, so the waveforms wave of the Sendai nuclear power plants SS1 and SS2 are simulated by Kyushu Electric. Uh, so time, time axis is, uh, time range is very much uh, shortened. And as you, as you can see, Duration times are extremely short compared with oh, compared with this waveform. This is uh, uh, the waveform observed obtained uh, at Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Uh, the, the time axis of these three figures, uh, the, the scale is the same. So this is just 30 seconds. So 30 seconds is here. And so this time axis range, range is 250 seconds. So uh, such a repeating strong ground, ground motion for a long time uh, affects is very severely to the nuclear power plant. And uh, as Sato, Mr. Sato said, uh, the peak ground acceleration of uh, SS2, uh, 620 gal, appears here, but just a moment. So 
uh, what I emphasize, what I want to emphasize is taking the non-cultural earthquake is, into account is indispensable. Uh, and concerning in, intra-slab earthquakes, uh, since the slab exists beneath the whole, Kyushu, whole of Kyushu from north to south, uh, I, I'll again skip the, the, the explanation for these figures. But uh, uh, so the, these show the vertical cross section of earthquakes uh, in these three belts. So th these black part shows uh, uh, slab, so subducted Philippine Sea Plate. So the slab exists beneath the, the whole of Kyushu from north to south. Uh, so an event like the 1909 uh, magnitude 7.6 earthquake uh, here can occur near Sendai nuclear power plant, uh, say around this place A. And so thus, an intraslab earthquake should have been selected, uh, also select, should have been selected as earthquakes for investigation. Uh, so if a magnitude 7.6 earthquake uh, occurs around here, around A, then uh, the seismic intensity meets uh, the Kyushu Electric criterion. So, so uh, conclusion and some additional remarks. Uh, the NRA review for the restart of the Sendai nuclear power plant, Unit 1 and 2, uh, which overlooked Kyushu Electric's error at the very basic level, violated uh, the post-Fukushima new regulatory requirements and thus accepted uh, inadequate standard seismic motion essential for the safety of the plant. And although Kyushu Electric's error was immediately evident from its own explanation in the open review meeting, the NRA uh, made no question or comment regarding this. And the NRA granted final approval, merely uh, reiterating Kyushu Electric's claim as it had been submitted to the NRA. And I, myself, addressed the problems uh, I've described to the NRA public comment process. However, there too, the NRA response was merely to reiterate Kyushu Electric's claim as it had been submitted to the NRA. There are many serious defects with the new regulatory requirements themselves, not limited to the earthquake issue. So they must be radically revised if nuclear power plants are to be utilized in this country. Uh, it is outrageous that even these inadequate standards are being violated. If such lax review processes continue, sometime at some nuclear power plant, it will be inevitable that there will be an earthquake that far surpasses this uh, standard seismic motion of the plant. And, uh, uh, this, and this could very well lead to a second uh, Genpatsu Shinsai earthquake nuclear combined disaster, which I have been uh, warning. That's all. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Um, to try and distill that, I think what Sato-san is saying is that the, the regulations that are touted to be the world's best simply aren't and don't match international standards, while Ichibashi-sensei is saying that even by those inadequate standards, the NRA, the Nuclear Regulatory Authority, is not... Um, is not uh, fulfilling its own standards. Uh, Eileen, I think you wanted 